So the deck I'm going to be piloting today is actually Mono Black Eldrazi in Standard. Um, not a deck that has seen too much play at, up to this point. Uh, we've seen various Eldrazi shells. Um, typically, though, we'll see a Thought Not Seer more likely played in Mono Blue Eldrazi or maybe a Green Red Ramp deck. Uh, personally, I've t talked myself a little bit about blue-red Eldrazi, but this week I wanted to try out a mono black list um, coming out of the last standard Grand Prix that finished in inside the top 16 and is still kind of going under the radar. It's actually very powerful um, from the games I've played. I've really liked it. Um, one of the best reasons to play a deck like this is, first of all, there's not that many actual black cards in the deck, we have Grasp of Darkness, it's like the only real black card, and then we have some colorless black cards that require black mana in Bearer of Silence and Transgress the Mind, but there's really mostly just colorless cards in the deck, um, which means our mana is really pretty smooth, and the other great thing about playing a deck like this is you get to play a lot of lands that do additional things because they make a colorless and they also have another effect. So. That's really my, my biggest pull is, is the mana base towards this deck. And that's one of the funny things because you get to a late game situation against a mono black Eldrazi or maybe a blue red Eldrazi deck. And all of a sudden they're sacrificing lands, they're getting tokens, they're drawing cards, they're making new sacrifice creatures. And so to that point, you see Blight Event here. Um, just a simple edict effect, but it's also a land itself. And. We've seen Blight Defense see some play up to this point, and it works really well in this deck alongside a host of removal spells and other edict effects. So this deck is capable of just completely uh, stopping your opponent from putting any pressure or having any creatures in play whatsoever. Um, and Blight Defense helps you do that later in the game. Um, it's also a nice answer to Dragon uh, problems like Dragonlord Ojatai, and we have Bearer of Silence as well. So we've basically got seven Edict effects total in the deck, and Edict effects are pretty good. We've seen Crackling Doom see a lot of play, and we don't need to play Crackling Doom. We can just play simple Edict effects that have um, a lot of potential against a lot of matchups. Um, you also see Pain Lands, uh, seven Pain Lands in the deck, which makes makes sense because not only do they produce black, of course they produce colorless, and you'll see pain lands even in a monocolor deck. It, you may not think it makes sense to play a pain land uh, when you, all you need is black mana and colorless mana, but uh, the green that Llanowar Oase produces and the white that Caves of Coilos produces doesn't really matter. It's just the colorless and the black mana. Um, sometimes you do take a bit of additional damage, but it's definitely worth it to have a more consistent mana base, so you're kind of forced into playing some pain lands. And then we have three copies of Foundry of the Consoles, uh, making 1-1 one, one, uh, Thopters. It's one of the best ways to close out a game. Uh, sometimes you can do it by by having your hangerback die, but a lot of times the ground will get stalled out and your opponent will have a grip of removal spells, but they won't want to spend them on 1-1 on one, one Flyers. and. So this card can actually um, be pretty backbreaking. And looking down um, at the rest of the mana base here, we see two copies of Seagate Wreckage and two copies of Mirror Pool. So some even more uh, cool colorless lands. Um, these lands have a significant impact later in the game. Um, Mirror Pool can copy a Reality Smasher, you can co copy Thought Knot, then you get the come into play trigger, your opponent reveals their hand. Um, so making a token of one of your own creatures is really pretty effective. And then you can also copy a removal spell, um, and that's pretty pretty nice as well. Um, Seagate Wreckage, we've seen it played in Modern a little bit, we've seen some play in Standard, and it allow allows this deck to just keep the gas flowing. Uh, drawing cards when hellbent. We see some basics, pretty straightforward. You only need to play basic uh, swamps, and they're the only black sources in the deck that um, don't cause you to take damage. So having some swamps in the deck is actually quite important. And then for Tomb of the Spirit Dragon, Tomb of the Spirit Dragon um, helps you gain life against any aggressive deck. 
um, whether it be mono red or red green um, tokens, or even the mid range matchups, just gaining three or four life each turn can help keep you out of range of burn spells. And I've been really impressed with Tomb of the Spirit Dragon and just about any Eldrazi deck I've seen in, in Standard. It really uh, pulls its weight, and playing four of them is pretty much a necessity. Um, so, all right. Enough with the mana base. The mana is great. Uh, it's one of the best reasons to play the deck, but you also need good spells. So, all right, let's go ahead and talk about some spells here. Uh, Bearer of Silence we already mentioned. Just a 2-mana, two 2-1 two flyer. Yes, it does not block, but it can edict your opponent at 4-mana. You just play it. It's an edict. It's also a creature. It does pretty much what this deck wants. And so you can slot it. You can say, hey, look, we only have 4-drops. Four, four drops. Well, wait. Bear of Silence can be a 4-drop. So now our mana curve list lo looks a little bit different. Um, and a lot of the times you do want to wait until 4-mana to play this because you can play something else on turn 2. Um, we have Transgress the Mind, a nice discard spell to have main. Uh, sometimes you rather have Duress, which is in the board, and you can sort of swap those in and out as you like. Um, but Transgress is pretty nice to take some of the more annoying cards your opponent might present. And just being able to know what's going on is kind of a big deal. So just having the, your opponent play with their hand face up is nice. Um, Grasp of Darkness... It's good. Uh, there's only two copies just because this deck isn't actually flush with black mana sources because you do want a lot of colorless sources. So you don't really want more than two, but two's a good number. And this card is really exceptional in terms of the removal spells in standard right now. Minus four, minus four kills a lot of things, especially for two mana. Um, and so I've been pretty impressed with it, but I do agree that you actually want four copies of sp Spatial contor Contortion because Spatial Contortion is actually the best removal spell that this tech has access to because it's the easiest one to cast, and it also kills a lot of things. Uh, a lot of cards have three toughness and standard, especially the early drops. Um, taking care of something like a Mantis Rider uh, or not taking care of it is absolutely the difference in a game so i really recommend spatial contortion it's seen some play in some of the ramp decks or other eldrazi decks but not normally as a four of here you see four copies of it and it's really starting to get the recognition it deserves as a very solid removal spell in standard and i expect to see more of it uh moving forward after the next standard rotation so um, be aware of that one moving forward. And then, kind of similar, I think a lot of people lump war Warping Whale and Spatial Contortion into similar decks, which makes sense because you want to be able to cast these spells consistently on turn two and able to make them uh, reasonable inclusions. And Warping Whale is a very versatile card. Um, I would say normally you don't want to make a 1-1, a sign unless you're accelerating into an important four or five drop but i would actually say that making one one is the least used mode out of the three which is interesting because i would think a lot of people upon first looking at the card would say oh this is just going to be a two mana get a one one scion but a lot of the times it's actually a removal spell or you can counter a sorcery um spell and that's the mode that people do not see coming especially out of a black deck people are like what you have a counter spell for my Hordling Outburst, or you have a counter spell for my Painful Truce, or whatever it may be, and it can be a game swinging um, spell if used correctly. Um, but let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about the creature base because we see a lot of cheap um, non creature spells, but this is an Eldrazi deck after all. It does have your typical Eldrazi creatures, and starting right off the bat with Eldrazi Mimic. Um, Mimic's a card which we've seen in Modern to have a lot of success. Now we're seeing it translate over to Standard, and it's a lot more than a 2-mana a 2-1. Two um, it's not insane. It comes out in some matchups just because it's really... It's okay when it becomes a 3-2 with mana reshapers, but it's at its best when it comes uh, becomes a 4-4 four, four with Thought Knot and Reality Smasher, but it's nice because it just fills up your mana curve and has the potential to get really big. 
Matter Reshaper is really, really, really important in the deck. It's the only three drop, first of all. And you always want to trade it, and most of the time your opponent doesn't have an option but to use a removal spell or trade a creature for Matter Reshaper. And so, just been super impressed with the card. Um, it may not look that important in a lot of Eldrazi decks, but it's really shown itself to be um, a key spell, and it helps you sort of curve into your higher uh, mana cost cards. Say you play a Matter, Sh Matter Reshaper on turn three and trade with something, um, almost 50% of the time you're actually going to hit a land off the reshaper, and you can put that land into play, and then you can play Reality Smasher a turn earlier. That's one scenario. You can also, as you may see in some of these games, you may, you may just flip another copy of Mana Reshaper after trading it. So you're getting just a free Mana Reshaper, essentially. Um, and you can chain them together. It works very well. Um, probably haven't said everything that's great about Matter Reshaper because there's so many good things about it. Um, but keep this card in mind moving forward in standard. And of course, uh, it's pretty much in all of the modern Eldrazi decks. Um, Bear of Silence, already talked about. Thought Not Seer. I mean, we don't really need to go over Thought Not Seer too much. It's the best Eldrazi creature. Um, point blank. Like, if you're an Eldrazi deck, you're going to have four Thought Knots. Uh, it helps um, supplement Transgress the Mine as just having more uh, discard. And just a 4 mana 4-4 four, four helps Eldrazi mimic. Uh, and it fills up the mana curve. So, looking at Reality Smasher, just another premier Eldrazi creature. This isn't a big mana Eldrazi deck, it's more of Eldrazi mid-range, black, um, 5-5 five, five Trample Haste can attack Planeswalkers, it's hard to deal with, it helps your mimics, and as mentioned before, it's actually really good with Mirror Pool. People don't necessarily see that onboard interaction where you play a 5-5 five, five, five Reality Smasher Smash, and then you use your mirror pull on turn six and you make another reality smasher. Then you have two five five tramples all of a sudden, and the game's essentially over at that point. Alright, so rounding out the main deck, there's two copies of Hangerback Walker. Not really too sure where we want to put this because it could be a two drop, it could be a six drop. Uh, but just another good colorless creature. It's not insane in the in the deck. It's just sort of a filler creature. You love it when it trades, but we all know about Hangerback Walker at this point. So let's look a little bit more at the sideboard. Um, so we see three copies of Duress. Um, more discard because there's certain non-creature decks where since we don't have access to stuff like counter spells, we really want to fight with discard. And so against a deck like Rally, or maybe a Prowess deck, or just a deck with a lot of non-creature spells, we want the Duress, um, we want Transgress the Mind, and then most of our other spells are actually just removal, um, which is pretty typical of a black deck, you would think. We've got Discard, and we've got Removal, so that makes sense. Um, Self-Inflicted Wound, uh, it's pretty well positioned right now. There are a reasonable amount of green and white decks. Um, ultimate price is obviously very bad if you're playing at something like Eldrazi, which is filled with colorless creatures. So it's not insane, but there are definitely some decks where you do want ultimate price uh, to be able to kill a key creature like, say, a Jace or a Kalidus or something of that nature. Um, the Ruinous Paths have really overperformed. A lot of the times you get to 7 and you can awaken them, or just being able to kill a Chandra, a Nyssa, a Gideon, uh, or a Flip Jace, or what have you. Um, I'm actually surprised Ruinous Path isn't seeing more play, because when it first got printed, um, there was a lot of hype around it, but then it didn't see a ton of play. Now I think people are starting to come around to it and playing it a little bit more, but it's really, it's really, really powerful. Um, the only board sweeper in the deck is Languish. Um, it does kill your own Thought Knots and some of your other creatures, but it comes in against specific matchups that try to go wide against you, and against those decks, it's just game over when you cast, the, cast it, so it's worth having two in the board. And then we have three copies of Kalidus. 
Uh, you'll notice a lot of double black cards on the sideboard, and they're... The one thing I might want to change moving forward in the deck is just the black requirements because we really only have the six swamps and then the seven pain lands. So it may be that we want, potentially, if we're going to have this many black cards on the sideboard, maybe have one or two more black sources on the board. So that's something I plan on work on moving forward. But we do have three copies of Kalidus, um, another four mana creature, but... It can take over the game very easily when coupled with removal. So, yeah, I'm really happy with the sideboard uh, overall and happy with the deck. So pretty excited to play with it. And that's the deck tech for today. <laughs>